Hey guys, so in this video we're looking at reducing rational expressions. Um, and rational expressions are basically just a fraction. If you think of kind of like an old school fraction, like, you know, eight tenths, usually you just kind of see what goes in and reduce it down to the four fifths. With this section, what we're going to do is um, factor and cancel, which is really what we've always done with fractions. We didn't just necessarily write it that way. And so if I think of uh, eight is two times four, ten is two times five, all right, so now I factored and then I cancel. So that's basically all this section is. Um, but the factoring skills are definitely going to work out in this one. So for this first problem, <clears throat> uh, we got a couple of trinomials. They're friendly. They lead with one. So I can just kind of set up my parentheses here. And then I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative five, add to be positive four. So that's going to be a plus five and a minus one. And for the 14, um, adds to negative 15, so that'd be a negative 1 and a negative 14. And then once we got that, we can cancel the x minus 1s, because they're multiplying. And we can't cancel across addition, so be careful not to cancel like these x's. Um, but as long as two things are multiplying, then you can cancel them. And so then what will be left is this right here. And that would be our answer. Uh, the other thing it's going to ask you in this section is for the variable restrictions. And variable restrictions, I'm going to uh, abbreviate it VR, just because it's a lot to write out. And the variable restrictions come from the fact that we can't divide by zero. So if I have like a number over um, zero, that is undefined. And so anything that would make this denominator zero is going to be a variable restriction. And so if I look at this denominator, I got x minus 14, x minus 1. And so if x was 14 um, or positive 1, that would cause this to be 0. 0 times it, who cares would be division by 0. So for these problems, we're always going to look at whatever's in the denominator. Set that to 0 prior to canceling because it's always relative to the original problem. And then the numbers that would make the denominator 0 are going to be your restrictions. Uh, for number two, <clears throat> let's see, so the numerator is going to factor to x plus 4 and x minus 4. Denominator, that's our difference of cubes, so that's going to be x minus 4. And then remember, we go x times x is x squared, x times 4 is 4x, and it'll be a plus. 4 times 4 is 16. And so that's the um, a cubed minus b cubed formula, if you need to look that one up. And so then I can cancel, so I can knock out those, uh, my restrictions on this one. So what's left here is the answer. I'm not going to rewrite it just for space. And the variable restrictions, this piece of the cube, um, if you try to set to zero, you'll get what's called imaginary solutions. And they are not restrictions because they're not real zeros. Um, this one, it'd be x cannot be 4. Um, so this part of the cube, though, it will never factor, which is why the formula stops there. And you don't have to worry about that piece in terms of the restrictions. Um, this next one, for the problems that have uh, more than one variable, they won't ask you for the restrictions. Not meaningful with the a and the x. Um, so pretty much we just have to get these factored and canceled. And this is one of those ones that's incredibly tempting to just start canceling a bunch of stuff, um, which is not a good plan. So we want to always factor first. Uh, so out of these first two, it's four terms, we're going to do grouping, I can take an x, and that's going to leave me an x minus 3a. I need another x minus 3a, and so if I write that down, it helps me see I need to pull a negative 2 out of here. Uh, downstairs, it's another x, x minus 3a, and so we're going to get another one, and for that one I need to pull a positive 2. So right here, this is the step where people have trouble. Um, the, <clears throat> the tendency is to start canceling x's and these and these, negative 2 over 2, negative 1. You, you can't do any of that. And the reason is that subtraction and that addition right there. Um, if I have two things, you know, x plus 1, x plus 2, for instance, just to make up an example, I can't cancel those x's because this isn't always 1 half. If x is 1, this would be 2 plus uh, two on top, three in the bottom, two thirds. Um, if it was three, it'd be four over five. So you can see this is, it's not a constant one half. So you can't cancel if there's that adding or subtracting happening. 
Um, so what we have to do instead is actually finish factoring. Now that I've made this really messy. So I'm going to take my GCF out front. And it's going to leave behind the X and my messy minus 2. And then here I can take the X minus 3 out front. There's 3A. And it'll leave me X plus 2. So then you can see if you tried to cancel here that you would probably cancel the X's, but they absolutely don't because they're wrapped up with this minus 2 and plus 2. So those ones reduce, and then what's left here would be the answer. And again, no restrictions because it's a multivariable problem. Okay, these next three are heavy try in class. Uh, so this one, we got our X's, and then multiplies to 12, adds to be 7, so I'll be a plus 3, and a plus 4. Uh, for the 18 and negative 3, we're going to need an x minus 6 and an x plus 3. So it multiplies to be 18, negative, and adds to be negative 3. So then cancel those, and then what's left would be my answer. Uh, variable restrictions would be uh, x can't be 6 or negative 3. <clears throat> so for this one... Um, Four terms up top, so I'll go ahead, I think I'll factor that first and then throw this down underneath it. So right here I can get an x squared, leaving me x plus 3. Here I could take out a negative 4, there's my other x plus 3. And then I'll take the x plus 3 out front, it leaves behind the x squared and the minus 4. And then this factors further, so now I'm going to kind of put that in the numerator. Um, so that's x plus 2, x minus 2, difference of squares. And then that's going to be over this piece. Uh, multiplies to negative 6 adds to be 1. So x plus 3 and x minus 2. So then when I cancel, um, the plus 3s are gone, the minus 2s are gone. So I just have uh, x plus 2 as my answer. And you don't want to put that over 1 or anything in the computer, just as is. Uh, variable restrictions would be, it can't be, oops, x can't be, <coughs> negative 3 or positive 2. Let's one more down here. Number 6. Uh, so numerator is a cube formula, so that's going to go x minus 2, and then x squared plus 2x plus 4. Downstairs, difference of squares, so x plus 2 and x minus 2. And canceling, we knock out those minus 2s. And so then all that's left is the x squared plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2. And our restrictions are going to be negative 2, positive 2. It's a little bit harder. Um, it's a couple of the magic method problems because I don't it doesn't lead with one um, I don't have squares on the ends. I don't have GCFs, so I just have to kind of factor what's here So I'm just going to start on this first one um, The 20 times 21 that's the one where I don't really like to actually finish out that math um, I find it easier if I just break them up a little bit and Then I can kind of wiggle the numbers around and see if I can get them to be uh, 23 apart in this case, it's going to be 23 part because, um, yeah, it's multiplying to be a negative, whatever this is, and adding uh, to be a negative. So my big number is negative, small number is positive. Um, so let's see, I think if I do 35 and 12, those are 23 apart. And like I said, big number is negative, so that's going on to 35. And then from there, we do the 20x minus 35 and 20x uh, Minus, sorry, plus 12. And then we have that fake 20 in there. We got an extra 20. So I'm going to divide out 5 of it here. And we divide out 4 of it there. So 5 times 4, there's the 20. And then that's going to reduce down to, and I'll throw it right here, I guess, um, 4x minus 7 and 5x plus 3. So there's a numerator. And then for the denominator, we're going to have a 35 and a 15, so it's going to be a 5 times a 7, and a 3 times a 15, or a 3 times 5 for 15. And that's all I have to work with. I need two numbers that are 4 apart, so it looks like it's going to be 21 and 25, and the 25 is going to be negative, so I'm just putting those together and those together to get those. So then that's going to look like, um, let's see, 35x 
plus 21, and 35x minus 25. Again, I fake 35, so I'll do 7 here, and I'll do 5 there. 5x plus 3, and this is going to go 7x minus 5. So that's my denominator. So now that I did all that, now I can just kind of put those together. And this one's down here. And so then we can cancel, and those, this right here, the 4x minus 7 over 7x minus 5 would be the answer. And then for the variable restrictions, um, the, so far they've been ones where you can just kind of look at and see the zero. If you can look at these and know it's going to be negative three-fifths and positive five-sevenths, that's cool. You can just go straight there. Um, here's how I'm getting those, is I'm physically setting that to zero and scooting the three over and then dividing out the five. And then if you do the same thing with this one, you bring the five over, divide the seven. So that's how I'm getting x equals uh, five-sevenths. So my restrictions would be x can't be those two numbers because those would make this denominator zero. Okay, so these next two, um, they're, they're a little bit sneaky. I'm going to just kind of talk through number eight here for a second and um, see if I can get that to make sense. So pretend for a minute, I'm just going to plug some numbers in and kind of see what happens. So if x was 6, this would be 6 minus 5 over... 5 minus 6. And I'm just making up 6 because it's an easy number. And so I get negative 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Um, let's say I pick a different number, like 7. So I got 7 minus 5 over 5 minus 7. So now I'm getting 2 over negative 2, and it's still negative 1. So hopefully you can kind of see, no matter what numbers I put in for this x, except for one thing, or restriction, so x cannot equal 5, because 5 minus 5 would give us 0. Um, but for any other number other than 5 that I put in, it's just going to reduce down to negative 1 every time. Um, so this thing right here does just equal um, negative 1. Uh, this form, this a minus b, b minus a. So that's kind of what we're looking at in this example. And again, this is always going to be negative 1. So anytime I run into that, um, same stuff, just reverse position, it's going to be a fancy form of negative 1. So if I look up here, I got 1 plus 2x and 1 minus 2x, the difference of squares, and that's going to be over 2x minus 1. So 1 minus 2x, 2x minus 1, that is of that form. So what that means is this whole thing right here is just negative 1. And so that would look like negative 1 times 1 plus 2x. And then I can just distribute the negative. I just put it in front to make it a little bit easier to see. So that's going to go negative 1 and then minus 2x. And on this one, our restrictions would be 2x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x equals 1. x doesn't get to equal. Basically, that can't equal 0. Um, and so that would be x can't be 1 half. OK, these ne next couple I'd have you try. Um, I'm going to factor them separately and then just kind of put it together for the answer. So for this top, I'm going to pull a 5 out of there first because um, everything's divisible by 5. So I'll give me 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. And then I can do my 2 times 3 is 6. I need two numbers to multiply positive 6. I had to be five, negative 5. So that would be negative 2 and negative 3. Careful not to fall for the 6 and 1. They would multiply to a negative 6. That's the deal there. So this is going to go 2x minus 2 and 2x minus 3. And I got that extra 2, which I'll divide out right there. So that's going to be 5, and then x minus 1, 2x minus 3. Uh, for this next one, it's uh, 2x squared. So I'd have a negative 6. So I'd need negative 3 and positive 2 for my, my values. So 2x minus 3 and then 2x minus 2, divide out my fake 2 right here, and 2x minus 3, x minus 1. So numerator there, denominator there, I'm just going to rewrite them, make it a little bit easier to look at. And this. Okay. 
Oops, where do I have a sign? Oh, I have a bad sign right there. That should be a plus. Cool. And so once I have all that factored, now I can do my cancel step. And so we're going to cross out the 2x minus 3s. And then basically what's left is the answer. So 5x minus 1 and x plus 1. And let's see, our restrictions would have come from this one. So if I think of setting that to 0, this side would be x equals 3 halves, or can't equal 3 halves because it's a restriction. And this would be x can't be negative 1. Okay, last one. So this is, it's not a difference of squares because of that y cubed there. Um, but it does have a GCF of x squared y squared. And so when I take that out of here, I just need a one placeholder. So when I distribute, it comes back. And here I'm taking uh, all the x's and two of the three y's. So that's going to be a minus y right there. And then right there's our, our negative 1. So this is just going to be negative 1, sorry, negative x squared y squared. Cool. So that uh, concludes reducing rational expressions.